this closet. Before 1860s and after. Before, you found that the Malays were highly tolerant, religious, moral people, caring communal people. They welcomed Arabs, Indian Muslim traders. They even tolerated colonialists and immigrants. Now, this is the nature of Malays. Huh? They are very tolerant. That is the reason why in this country, you notice today, the economic power is already gone into their hands. We only have, they have only the political power. But that thing cannot happen in any other society at all. If any other society, if they have the political power, they will never let economy dominates. So why in uh, Malaysia it can happen? Because it, the Malays are highly tolerant people, maybe molded by Islam, huh? right? Mm. So is it, this one I have mentioned it, yeah? Establishment of private banks in Penang, right? Okay. Now this is this one, huh? the influx of the immigrants. Huh? Now notice, notice here, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not against here uh, making racial statements, okay? You have to understand. I'm giving a historical perspective so that you understand the history. Because the, the Chinese community, they became uh, economic dominance all through legal process, legal. You have to understand that, it's not illegal. It is all made legal, you see. So you have to understand how it happened. This is what you are telling, eh? the, the, no, the non-willingness of the Muslims to deal with the banks when they first issued the fiat money, that caused a large uh, uh, immigrants to come into the country. And then these are the continuation of the fiat monetary system. This is the uh, Bank Nagara in 87, right? Now, all along, two things, the financial inclusion. The moment when it started interest-based, there was a financial occlusion, uh, exclusion. When the, when the Muslim community accepted the paper money, but they didn't want to deal with the interest base, there's a financial exclusion. Because when the money is created, it is not given to you. It is given to others who are willing to take it. Default or not? So you are systematically excluded first. But the creation of fiat money itself, it causes a, a fall in the relative financial inclusion of the Malays and the Muslim. The moment you create the fiat money, it creates your relative inclusion falls because the, the interest base causes an exclusion because it is against your um, uh, religious principle. For 100 years, you went through financial exclusion and continuously falling financial inclusion. Relative. Just now I gave you an example between urban area and rural area. But even within an urban area or rural area, there can be a difference in financial inclusion between people. Do you see that or not? Right? So you may, we may all live in the same community, but if one community has a lower financial inclusion, then your economic uh, well-being will keep on, uh, you will be relatively, your economic well-being will be less compared to one who has a higher economic uh, inclusion. You see that? So uh, I did mention to you ownership, uh, management and employment uh, of uh, excluded the Muslims in the beginning. Uh. Now when did the uh, Muslims first have? I already mentioned to you, right? Banks of national, but you're already 100 years behind time. By, by then, the wealth of the, uh, the communities, eh, especially the Chinese community, eh, the, the wealth have increased tremendously by the 100 years. When I was in Penang, eh, you know my father, he, uh, he had a shop in uh, Penang, right in the middle of the city. It is actually, it is a, a shop lot, eh, many shop lots. So we own, uh, we rented one of them. The entire shop lot is belong to the uh, one Malay Pachi. He lives in the kampung. So one of the shops, they were given the responsibility to collect the rentals and then we'll go a monthly pay, pay him in the kampung, right? Now, th this is the heart of the city we're talking today. But the rest of like Bali Pulau area or even in the, you know, where the Bayan Lepas, where the airport is, nobody goes there. It's all kind of Ulu, you know, Ulu place. Even the bus doesn't go there, you know. But, but then, uh, you see, today, after, uh, after all these years, 100 years, you notice the entire island is actually already gone. The ownership, not only the uh, town areas, but also the, the entire uh, rural areas. Everything is gone. So if you ask me, is it because we are not, uh, other communities are not uh, business savvy, they are not any? No, it is, if you ask me, it is entirely, uh, not, not entirely, predominantly assisted by the financial system through this process. 
This is the process that assisted the transfer. And it's not only happening in Penang. You know, many Malays now, they are moving out of the island. They are moving to Batuworth, Kulim and so on. Right? Isn't it? Because you cannot afford a housing like that. Because those areas will rise. So Singapore, Penang and uh, uh, Johor Bahru is very clear. The same dynamic is happening. But also Kuala Lumpur, uh, all the major cities. It is pushing, pushing out the indigenous people. Uh, indigenous. So why I touch on Malays? What about other races, right? I touch on the Malays because they were the original uh, people, the indigenous people, together with our Nasi. Uh, there's a reason why I, I, uh, I put the title like that. So while the Malays lost their land and so on, the Arabs and the Indian Muslim traders lost their business competitiveness. We lived for hundreds of years dominating. Within 50 years, the, the thing was flipped. Uh, within 50 years, our competitiveness was flipped within uh, in a fair market system because of the financial the relative fall in the financial inclusion. Right? So what do we have after? So we see a loss of Malay wealth in, in economy, the relative wealth of the, uh, particularly the Chinese community have tremendously increased. There's also a lot of corruption people uh, talking about. They're all related. I did in my master's economy, the relationship between, uh, <coughs> between economic factors and crime level. So when you find the wealth of this thing in any society, if, you're, if you have uh, political power, but you are economically, uh, what do you call that, uh, at a um, um, disadvantage, right? Then these are two right ingredients for corruption. Any country you can see that. If I'm politically, if I'm an officer and then I have power, you are a wealthy guy, you know, you can, uh, right? Then if I don't have my religious uh, values behind me holding it, easily I'll be tempted by bribery. You know? So this is the why you see corruption is rising, but the economic pie for the Malays and the other Bumiputrasan, that includes the other indigenous people, shrinking. So that's the reason why in this community you see a lot of socio-economic problems. It's all relative game. So when I say Chinese, it's not all Chinese. If I say this, is, it's a relative game. So this is the reason, if you ask me, give me one reason, I'll say this is the reason why they're increasingly Malays inclining towards the political opposition. It is financial uh, economic distress. They may say, you know, in any government can be however corrupted, but if you keep me, you know, well fed and everything I have, I don't, I won't go to the streets to pick it. That's the nature of human beings. But it is not uh, this thing. Increasingly, people are falling into economic distress. So they think, if you go to the opposition, perhaps they can help solve this problem. But so long this present monetary system, the dynamics is there, the problem will only really get worse, worsen until you solve it. In the last election, you saw a lot of people moving like that, isn't it? But the Chinese community also went for the opposition, not because of economic distress. It's because they thought this is the time they can also get the political dominance. Isn't it? So, this government has five more years. Either you uh, solve it for the, this economic distress or the distinct and reverse it. Otherwise, the problem will only get worse. You will find larger and larger groups moving because of economic distress. You read a few days ago the household debt, the personal debt, right? This is the trend that will happen. Because every money in this system is created in the form of debt. You see? Except the notes and coins, la, huh? which is only about 20% only. All right, huh? so it has also changed ourselves. We have uh, Muslims, including Malays, the Arabs, and the Indian Muslim traders. We are all now involved in this rebawi system already. We didn't stop it, but we embrace it after 100 years <laughs> huh? for economic survival purposes. Right now, I want to show you. Even in that, we have to take note of this one. You see the ownership and management of a, a bank. Huh? If you notice, right at the top, there are chairman, CEOs, top management. Now some of them are Muslims already, Malaysian Muslims, huh? the top management, CEOs. Then we have the loan officers and the lower management and so on. 
the important thing in finance, uh, in finance for financial inclusion and the political game here, is actually who controls the loan office. Because it's the loan officers who have the right to create money and give to whom, whom, uh, whomever they think, you know. In it. So uh, let me mark, and you may want to do a research on that. Huh? You go to all the banks and take, you find out who controls the loan office. Uh, I leave it to you, huh? right? Uh, then you will find a surprising uh, statistics. Uh, you will see a surprising statistics. It doesn't matter who owns the bank. The PowerPoint is actually the loan officer. They are the king makers of the Russian Reserve Banking, right? So you will see in the political game, because this is the one that can create money and give to whomever he likes. Create money, uh, whomever, whoever it uh, deems uh, deserving. So in the Russian Reserve Banking system, the fiat money, basically the right to resources of the entire nation is actually controlled at that office. Uh, the right to resources in the entire nation, it is actually controlled at their office. So what I'm saying is that since the fractional reserve banking is continuing in the fiat monetary system the way it is, there's a continuous loss of a relative economic well-being and also a relative fall in the financial inclusion of Malays up until now in the process is continuing. It's not like it has not stopped, right? It has not stopped. Right, so uh, this one, all, right? the affirmative actions. Huh? So you know that uh, Tun Mahathir, during his time, he tried to counter it using the new economic plan. The new economic NEP was as, uh, introduced in 1971, it ended in 1990. Huh? So he even did some education policy for Boeing Putara, some of us, some, some of you may be beneficiaries of it. I did remember during my time, if you are in O level, if you get one A in any subject, you will be sent overseas. One subject only. If you get A, a for any subject, you will be sent overseas. So that policy increased the, the middle income group, the educated levels and the middle income group of Malays. Counted a bit. But the fractional reserve banking system was actually going against it in a much bigger scale. So that's the reason why such policies, the government cannot continue such policies. Because your economic the pie keeps shrinking. Your economic pie sh uh, keeps shrinking, so the government cannot continue to 